Sisyphus? He's a character in Greek mythology who is condemned to roll a rock up the same hill forever. Every time he gets to the top, the rock rolls right back down, and he has to start over again. His story has something to do, or something in common, with Bill Murray's character in Groundhog Day, <laughs> who has to repeat the same day until he gets, a, gets things a little closer to right. Sisyphus is stuck for eternity. We are in the same sort of uphill business, but we're in it for the sake of eternity. We're here to bear the rock of ages on this hill today. <clears throat> Jesus insists that his job is not to judge the world, but to save it by speaking what he's been commanded, eternal life. That's the word and the vision that we are bringing here with us today. All of Jesus' followers are meant to be climbing up the hill to spread a vision of eternal and abundant life, and we claim the hope that there will eventually be an end to climbing up the hill. This understanding of eternity is shorthand, shorthand for the reign of God fully present. It's about humanity and all creation collaborating in an ecosystem of justice, living in freedom and holiness. The Navajo word for it is hojo, often translated as beauty or balance. Hebrew calls it shalom. It means knowing that we are all related and connected and that how we live affects all others and that we'll only find true peace and justice when we live consciously interdependent lives. It's the vision the prophets have always held up. Here again, Isaiah's banquet on the hillside. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. That's what needs to roll up the hill today. That image of a holy picnic, if you will, so that all the people of this nation might enjoy that feast. Come up this hill as a light to the nations, so that God's salvation might reach to the ends of the earth. Take your part in the body of Christ, and be that flaming vision of righteousness that Bishop Stacy referred to on Monday. One of the verses we didn't hear. I have seen him in the watch fires of a hundred circling camps, they have builded him an altar in the evening dews and damps. I can read his righteous sentence by the dim and flaring lamps. God's day is marching on. Be that flaming lamp that gives light to the world we share. Take your light up this hill. Light fires in those who have grown cold or dead and let it combine with others to bring light to this and to every nation. This hill could help to build a city that would shed light on all the nations. That's certainly what our forebears here hoped for. We may doubt that this hill will ever induce the nations to stream in and learn righteousness, beauty, and balance in human relationships. It's been something of the opposite in recent months and years. But the dreams you bear up here can help to warm cold, cold hearts and remind us all of our interconnectedness. As the psalmist puts it, when the people practice justice, God blesses it, and the nations stand in awe of it. Consider your travels today like marching to Zion, the beautiful city of God, 
Come we that love the Lord, and let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord, and thus surround the throne. This hill is a lot like the one Jesus climbed up when he went to confront the powers in Jerusalem. It's the hill of Calvary as well. It's a place of sacrifice, where each of us can offer something of ourselves for the life of the whole body. I pray that your offering today may bring healing and holiness. Be like the widow seeking justice. Keep knocking at the door of justice. Remember as well that none of us goes alone to this work. We go in company as part of the body of Christ and the company of all faithful people seeking that eternal vision of a holy and healed community. We heard in Acts about the beginnings of this movement across the Mediterranean. Barnabas and Saul were sent by a band of leaders and I would say advocates in that church in Antioch who represented the diversity of the Mediterranean world. Simeon the Black, Lucius from Libya, and even Manian, who was a member of the Herod's court, the Quisling, if you will. Quite a range of ethnicities and social locations. That band sent them off to Cyprus and Greece to share this vision with the whole world. You do not climb this hill alone. You go as part of the company of saints on behalf of the forgotten in this land. The message you carry today is an essential piece of bringing true peace everywhere. Our hope lies in expecting to find God there ahead of us, already at work transforming hearts and minds toward that vision of eternity. I would challenge you to expect to find, to meet the image of God in your gatherings today, in people who disagree with you or even seem not to listen. Search for that image of God anyway. Share what you know of the image of God in the poor, in yourself, in your neighbors. You've had a remarkable experience already of meeting the image of God in this diverse gathering. Now it has become a body of friends. Can you share that light with those you meet this day? This Congress has had enormous difficulty recently in seeing the holiness in all sorts of others. Those with different positions, different strategic approaches to the nation's problems, those with little voice in national politics, the hungry, the poor for whom we claim the door was fully open. You might take with you as you go the torch of freedom, an image that is born of the more cosmic one that we know as the eternal light of the world. I remind you of what is written in New York Harbor. Not like the brazen giant of Greek fame with conquering limbs astride from land to land, here at our sea-washed sunset gates shall stand a mighty woman with a torch, whose flame is the imprisoned lightning, and her name, Mother of Exiles. From her beacon hand glows worldwide welcome. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. The wretched refuse of your teeming shore, send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. The mother of exiles welcomes the poor. Anselm of Canterbury put it this way in the 11th century. Jesus, as a mother, you gather your people to you. You are gentle with us as a mother with her children. Often you weep over our sins and our pride. Tenderly you draw us from hatred and judgment. You comfort us in sorrow. 
and bind up our wounds. In sickness you nurse us, and with pure milk you feed us. Bear the torchlight of this hill. Spread its flame and open the door of true and holy freedom for all people. <laughs>